Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I'm trying something a little bit new and different for me. So I have the um, this lovely Frida stamp set and this came as part of the creative stamping issue 120. And what I thought I would do is look up some inspiration of Frida's artwork. And I found this one that was really, really colorful. It didn't look like there was um, too, too much going on that I wouldn't be able to achieve, especially because a lot of her work is very loose and abstract. And I just really loved all of the colors behind her in that background. I picked up some oil pastels just to play with. I'm not an artist, not by any stretch, but I just really like having a lot of different media supplies. So I I picked these up. They're really affordable, super cheap, really. Um, these are Pentels, nothing expensive. I think the set of 50 or so was under $10. And I picked out some colors that I felt like were part of the inspiration piece. I'm trying to not recreate by any stretch, but just, you know, be inspired by. And so all I'm doing, I'm working on watercolor paper because it does have a little bit of tooth to it. So it will grab that oil pastel and I'm just having a bit of a play. So just laying down some colors, trying different techniques for blending. I did a lot of research into oil pastels and the Pentel pastels are known to be a little bit on the harder side and less creamy side. So they will be a little bit harder to blend. But I do have a set of the Mungio Gallery pastels coming and those should be creamier, a little bit more in line with the um, Sennelier pastels. But of course, you know, not still in that very affordable range, which for me is just like out of curiosity and, you know, a hobbyist. I don't make art to sell. Um, really all of the media supplies I get are just for fun, just for card making and, um, you know, just having some downtime to just create sometimes, even if there's no actual project in mind. So what I'm finding with these Pentel um, pastels, oil pastels, is that they uh, they blend a little bit better when I actually use a um, like a balled up or or folded up paper towel, but they will eventually blend together as you saw at the bottom portion with the yellow right on the page. So if you just layer enough of the um, medium onto the paper, it will start to blend together. And at the bottom, you can kind of see how it's um, all of the yellows. It's actually three shades of yellows that are mixed in down there. And I tried with each of the different colors that I picked out to get a light, a mid, and a dark for that reason, just so that I can blend things so that there's a little bit more color variation and it doesn't seem so flat. Not that I'm trying to create anything that actually has a 3D shape to it, but just that um, I feel like it's a little bit more interesting if there's some spots that are a little bit darker, some that are a little bit lighter, just so that you have some of that variation. The inspiration piece that that I'm working off of, it's also not sort of 100% covered with pigment. There's a little bit of white showing through. I don't know if that's white splatter after the fact or if that's actual canvas that's showing through. But I, I took that to mean that I don't really have to strive too hard in my piece to 100% cover the watercolor paper. So if a little bit of that white is still showing through, I am going to be totally happy with it. 
And once I have the initial lay down of color, I I keep going over it to build to build more color up and to smooth out some of the blend to cover a little bit more of the watercolor paper and as my first go with oil pastels I had a lot of fun I was I was actually quite nervous uh, this box sat unopened for at least a week usually with when I get new supplies I like to just I'm not always on camera using it but I do like to kind of dig in and and experiment a little bit with it but for the oil pastels I was a little bit nervous and I didn't really need to be um, but I think I'm glad that I picked something like this where I feel like it's so loosey-goosey I don't I don't think I could have gone wrong just to have a play and that's a little bit of Frida's work as well is just to uh, express yourself through art in your own way and um, and to just uh, be uniquely you. And so it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, I, I had a lot of fun with this and I can't wait for my, uh, the Mungio Gallery, um, oil pastels to arrive. Those are supposed to be creamier. So it'll be interesting to kind of compare and contrast and, um, just to do more with them. So this is one of the stamps uh, from the huge stamp set that you get with the Creative Stamping Magazine. And I love this. It's, it's not quite exactly the same uh, image as obviously the um, self-portrait that I used as my inspiration piece. But I, I would like this one because she's at least um, looking forward where the other stamped image of Frida in that set uh, she's looking, it's more of a uh, profile, like a three-quarter profile image of her. So I thought this one would work really well. I stamped it with Versafine Onyx Black Ink onto vellum. And then I'm clear heat embossing it just so that, one, that ink sets and dries. And I don't have to worry about it smudging or smearing because pigment inks um, don't dry right away. You do have to give them a little bit of time. But I'm being very careful with my heat gun. It's on the lower of the two heat settings and I'm moving it around quite a lot. Like normally when you, you when you melt your embossing powder, you kind of let it go, uh, let your heat gun get really hot, start in one area and then just slowly move your heat gun as you see it melting. With vellum, I just wanted to be careful not to um, not to have it curl or, or um, warp the vellum in any way. So I want it to be a little bit more gentle with it by moving it around, moving the, the heat off the vellum and just making sure that um, that I'm catching all of the areas. So once it turns glossy and shiny is when you know it's all been melted. So now with that piece done, I think... I've got all of the pieces that I need to start assembling. When my watercolor um, panel was originally four and a half by six, so larger than USA 2. I did that intentionally just so that I, if there were parts I needed to trim off the edge, I would have that option. And I decided because I've got the black heat embossed stamp that I wanted a black border around this piece as well. So I've actually cut my uh, panel, my watercolor panel to four inches by five and a quarter. And so I've got that really nice uh, solid black matte border all the way around. And this is USA2 top folding. So it measures in total, um, the card folded is four and a quarter by five and a half. And now I'll just trim down, I'll fussy cut my um, vellum uh, stamped image here, which I um, wasn't sure initially if I would leave it rectangular, but I thought I, I want that bold background to come through. So I don't want to cover the entire thing with vellum because the vellum is going to uh, kind of... It'll still let the background show through, but it's going to mute it a little bit so that it's faded to the back. So surrounding her, I'd rather have that really striking, vibrant color come through. I I like the look of this with the vellum, but 
I had a bit of a curiosity as to whether I can oil pastel onto vellum. And so I tried a bit of it onto some of that scrap that I cut away and it worked. So now what I'm doing is just taking white pastel and I am coloring in where her skin is. And I'm using a blending stump to blend that out so it's nice and smooth, but also to kind of push some of that oil pastel into all of the little um, edge areas that are hard to get into with the pastel um, crayon itself. So um, I found it works really, really well. I like the look of the white because it just, there's still that colorful background coming through, but it helps to define her a little bit more in terms of um, just that portraiture of her. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to do everything in the white. I just wanted her skin to be white. And um, that way you can really, you can really see her face, which I think was the most important. But if I was going to do the face, I wanted to do all of the skin just to make it have a little bit of logical sense as to why, why just that portion. And so really love how that turned out. Now, the tricky part with vellum is if you apply glue, where you apply the glue, it's going to look a little bit differently. And we have, I have nowhere to hide that glue because there's nothing that's really solid um, with the vellum. So when that's the case, I just like to apply glue everywhere. Um, and I'm using Kalau all-purpose glue. It's a nice um, solvent-based glue and it's nice and clear and if you have full coverage then your vellum i love how it transformed the vellum because it it makes it almost actually feel like it's a transfer a rub-on transfer because instead of that frosty look everything looks really clear now and it's still a little bit frosty where uh we put where i put the white but it just is a really neat effect that that I was really happy with. You can still tell that it's vellum. It's not 100% clear, but it's definitely more clear than just um, the vellum, how the vellum looked uh, initially, but just by itself. And the last thing I'll do is I'll use one of the sentiments that came in the companion smaller stamp set in the magazine and I am using stays on to stamp right on top of the oil pastel, which worked a charm. Stamping it the one time was actually solid enough, but I really wanted to make sure it was super dark and, um, and that it came through really well. So I stamped it a second time. So definitely um, having the stamp positioning tool was helpful for that. And then I just scratched on my initials because this is the first thing that I've done with oil pastels. And it almost feels like a bit of a work of art. So it's almost like an artist, um, you know, signing their work. So I just did a little scraffito where you, you kind of scratch up your oil pastel. Um, it's very, very subtle. I'm probably the only one who will know it's there and you have to look real close to see it, but at least I know it's there. Um, and this is one that turned out really, really well. I was, I really fell in love with it just as soon as I finished that oil, um, pastel background and it just kept evolving and going to new places and especially once the vellum was adhered with that uh Kalau all-purpose glue and made it go a little bit more translucent I really really started to love it even more so this is a card that I don't think I will give away. I actually might just keep this one for myself, but I I had a lot of fun making it, and and I really did feel inspired by the stamp set by Frida the artist, and so really really glad I had the opportunity to um, craft with this set, and I can't wait to craft some more with it as well. I hope that you enjoyed this video and let me know if you've ever used oil pastels before and if you have this um, issue of creative stamping, how you've been enjoying it. Thanks so much and until next time, happy crafting and have a fabulous day. Bye!